Russian Orthodox bell ringing has a history starting from the baptism of Rus in 988 and plays an important role in the traditions of the Russian Orthodox Church. Theology The ringing of bells is one of the most essential elements of an Orthodox Church. Church bells are rung to summon the faithful to services express the triumphal joy of the Christian Church Announce important moments during the services both to those in church and to those who are not able to be physically present in the church, so that all may be united in prayer. Strengthen Christians in piety and faith by its sound, which Orthodox Christians believe is alloyed with divine grace to disperse and destroy the forces of cruelty and of demonic suggestion. Proclaim important events, such as the death of a member of the church, the arrival of an important person, such as the bishop or civil ruler, an emergency such as fire or flood, or victory in battle as dramatically recreated in the triumphant conclusion of the 1812 overture, the use of bells is not only practical, but is also considered to be spiritual. Bells are sometimes referred to as singing icons. Because they establish the acoustic space of an Orthodox temple just as painted icons and hymnography define its visual and noetic space, respectively. Icons are considered scripture in image, as bells are scripture in sound. There are several liturgical services which point out the importance of bells in the Russian Orthodox Church, blessing the foundation of a new bell tower, blessing a new bell tower after construction is completed, blessing, naming, and chrismating a bell. There is also a service for the blessing of a bell ringer. Bells are blessed with a ritual containing many of the elements of the rite of baptism. The new bell is blessed with holy water and sensed, both outside and inside, and the priest lays hands on the bell to bless it. During the rite, the bell is named, that is, consecrated in honor of a saint, whose icon has often been molded into the side of the bell when it was cast at the foundry. But though a bell may be called the Gabriel bell, it would never be called the Saint Gabriel bell, because a bell is not a saint. The bell is also anointed with chrism, just as an Orthodox Christian is at chrismation. The theological understanding of bells as weapons in spiritual warfare, and their role in the Christian life is emphasized during the rite by the scripture lesson from Numbers chapter 10 verses 1 to 10. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Make for yourself two silver trumpets, and they shall be for you for the calling of the assembly. When you sound an alarm, and if you shall go forth to war, and in the days of your rejoicing. The use of bells is symbolic of the proclamation of the gospel. Sometimes Orthodox churches and monasteries will combine the use of bells with the striking of a wooden or metal samantron, with the samantron being sounded first, then the bells being rung later. The quieter and simpler sound of the Samantron is understood to symbolize the Old Testament prophets, for it is the symbol only of a coming event, whereas the ringing of the bells is spread far into the air symbolizing the annunciation of the gospel throughout the world. History After the conversion of Kievan Rus to Christianity in the 10th century, bells came gradually into use everywhere. Originally, a flat piece of wood or metal called a samantron would be beaten rhythmically with a mallet to summon the faithful to services. This was especially true in monasteries, some of which still to this day use both samantrons and bells. While the samantron was inherited from Greece, the use of church bells was imported into Russia from Western Europe. The Russian word for bell is kolokol, which comes from the German word glock, derived from the Latin cloca, which in turn appears to come from the Irish clog. The word for bell in Church Slavonic is kampan, which is derived from Latin campana. During the 15th century the samantron began to be gradually replaced by bells. At that time, several foundries for bell making were established in Russia. Russian church bells are commonly cast using a mixture of bronze and tin, often with silver added to the bell metal, to produce their unique sonority and resonance. Russian bells also tend to differ from Western bells in the proportion of their height to width, and the method of varying the thickness of the walls of the bell. The clapper tongue of the bell also follows a different design than that used in the West. The art of bell founding reached its pinnacle in the 18th century, with the production of unimaginably huge bells. 
The largest bell in the world, the Tsar Bell 218 tons, was cast in 1733 for the Ivan the Great Bell Tower in Moscow. Unfortunately, the Tsar Bell was damaged in a fire in 1737 before it could be successfully hung, and stands today at the base of the tower. The largest working bell in the world is the Dormition Bell pounds, which hangs in the same Ivan the Great Bell Tower. After the Bolshevik Revolution, the Soviet Union severely persecuted Christianity. Numerous bells were destroyed and during certain periods the production of church bells all but stopped. After the fall of the Iron Curtain the production of bells resumed, and has experienced a surge of activity as many of the churches that were destroyed are being rebuilt. Topic. Technique of ringing Technically, bells rung in the Russian tradition are sounded exclusively by chiming i.e., moving only the clapper so that it strikes the side of a stationary bell and never by swinging the bell. For the Russian tradition a special complex system of ropes is used, designed individually for each bell tower. All the ropes are gathered at approximately one point, where the bell ringer stands. Some ropes the smaller ones are played by hand, the bigger ropes are played by foot. The major part of the ropes, usually, all ropes are not actually pulled, but rather pressed. Since one end of every rope is fixed, and the ropes are kept in tension, a press or even a punch on a rope makes a clapper strike the side of its bell. The secrets of this technique have passed from generation to generation, but by the 20th century this art was almost lost. Training took place only at workshops until 2008, then the first permanent traditional bell ringing school opened in Moscow, under the leadership of Drozdihan Ilya. No melody is employed, as in the Western Carillon, but rather a complicated polyrhythmical sequence of sounds is produced. The foundation of orthodox bell ringing lies not in melody but in rhythm, with its intrinsic dynamic, and in the interaction of the timbers of various bells. These sequences have a very special harmony, since Russian bells unlike Western European ones are not tuned to a single note. Western bells usually have an octave between the loudest upper tone ring, and the loudest lower tone hum. Russian bells have a seventh between these sounds. Generally, a good Russian bell is tuned to produce a whole scale of sounds up to several dozen of them. This effect is accomplished both by the composition of the alloy from which the bell is cast and the sculpting of the sides of the bell in the mold. Topic. Types of ringing The Russian Orthodox Tipikon provides for different types of bell ringing. Different ringing is used on different days on working days, on Sunday, on holy days, during fasts, Lent, Easter etc. Different ringing is required for different services for morning service, service for the dead, liturgy, etc. These differences are accomplished by ringing particular bells in particular ways. Topic. Terminology To understand the Russian Orthodox method of bell ringing, it is necessary to recognize a few items of terminology. The bells in an Orthodox bell tower are organized into three groups Zazvani — the smallest, or soprano bells. Podzvani — the middle, or alto bells. Blagovestnik — the largest, or bass bells. Within each of these three groups there may be several bells of varying size, all within the general range of the group. The larger the bell, the deeper its voice. A zivan is a toll on any bell or bells. A zivaner is a bell ringer. In the Orthodox Church, this is a tonsured clerical position, and there is a distinct service of the setting apart of a bell ringer. The use of electric bells is forbidden in the Orthodox Church, because it is a sacred function, and may only be performed by a member of the church. Before he goes into the bell tower, the zivaner will go to the priest or the igumen if it is a monastery for a blessing to ring the bells. Different ringing is used at different moments of the service before the service, during the most essential parts of the all-night vigil or divine liturgy, while the departed is being carried to the cemetery, etc. Four kinds of canonical tolls are distinguished, which, rung separately or in combination, comprise all the diversity of orthodox bell ringing, blagovist, parabor, parasvon, and tresvon. Topic. Blagovist The blagovist is the measured striking of a single large bell called the blagovestnik. Blagovist means annunciation, 
or good news, because with this ringing the believers are notified that the divine service is about to begin in the church. As a separate toll before the beginning of a divine service, the Blagovist commences with three slow strokes i.e., with rather long pauses between, and thereafter continues with more frequent, measured strokes, sometimes ending with three more slow strokes. According to the Typicon, the Blagovist should last for as long as it takes to read through Psalm chapter 118 Septuagint, KJV, Psalm chapter 119 once, or Psalm chapter 50 KJV, Psalm chapter 51 12 times. Depending on the type of the divine service, the Blagovist is classified as regular. Obinoveni, i.e., fast and often accomplished by swinging the clapper to both sides of the bell, or Lenten, postni, i.e., slow, and on only one side of the bell. On great feasts the Blagovist is told on the largest Blagovestnik in the tower and the toll as a rule is faster, louder, and longer. Besides the normal Blagovist, in Orthodox ringing there is another, named title Valavoy or Great. Bolshoi, when strokes on the largest Blagovestnik are mixed with tolls on another Blagovestnik. The Blagovest can be sounded on different bells, depending on the day. Large bell towers typically have five Blagovestniki ranged from larger to smaller Festal or Triumphal Prosnichny or Torzistveni Polyolios Polyoleni Sunday Voskresny Daily or Ferial Budnini or Prostodinevi Small or Lenten, Mali or Postni. Topic: Parabor. The Parabor Russian Parabor is the funeral zvon. Each individual bell is struck once, from the smallest to the largest, in a slow, steady peal. After that, all of the bells are struck together at the same time. Striking the bells from the smallest to the largest symbolizes the stages of a person's life from birth to death, the final striking of all the bells together symbolizes the end of earthly life. During the parabor, each stroke of a bell should not be made until the sound of the previous bell has died away. The parabor may be repeated as many times as necessary, and is told as the body of the deceased is carried from the temple church building to the grave. The parasvon, Russian, parasvon is the striking of each of the bells, once or several times, from largest to the smallest, with a final stroke on all at once. The pattern may be repeated many times, but the final stroke on all bells is made only at the very end. This peal symbolizes what the Orthodox Church holds to be the kenosis self -emptying of God the Son when He became incarnate Philippians chapter 2 verses 7 to 8, and is sounded only twice a year, on Great Friday and Great Saturday during those moments which recount Jesus' death on the cross and His burial. Tresvon The Tresvon triple peal is the rhythmical ringing of multiple bells, using all the major groups of the bell scale. The Tresvon is the most joyous of the various types of rings. The order of ringing the different bells is not fixed, but may be composed by the bell ringer himself and prompted by his creativity and self-expression. For the Tresvon, the elaborate pattern is repeated three times, with a short pause between each repetition. All three groups of bells participate in the tresvon soprano, alto, bass, and each group has its own part in the peal. Traditionally, the meter for a tresvon is three quarters or four quarters. The largest bell which can participate in it is the blagovestnik which was used to ring the blagovest for the given service, or a smaller bell, but not a larger one. The tresvon is usually rung in three stages, the beginning, the zvon itself, and the finale. The beginning usually consists of three slow tolls on the Blagovestnik for that day, symbolizing the Holy Trinity. The main part of the Tresvon, the Zvon, is often performed in several movements, one, two, or three, often called verses, each of which is finished with one, two, or three chords formed by striking several select bells at once, corresponding to the number of verses. Each movement might have its own particular rhythm, dynamic, and composition. The tresvon is usually finished with three chords. The length of the tresvon is normally the length of the time it takes to read of Psalm chapter 50, but on more festive occasions it should be longer. The davuzvon double peel is the same as a tresvon, except the pattern is repeated only twice instead of three times. 
Topic: Occasions. The above types of zivans may be combined and rung at particular times during the same service, or used exclusively on certain occasions. The following are general guidelines, and cannot accommodate the full richness and diversity of the Russian Orthodox Church. There are also variations in local tradition. All Night Vigil Divine Liturgy Holy Week and Pasha Feast Days Funerals Topic. Gallery Topic. References Topic. External links Orthodox Bells. Retrieved 25 May 2009. Recordings of Russian Bells. Examples of Russian Orthodox bell ringing at Predini. Rue Media Archive. Russian Society of Bell Ringers A picture of the consecration of a bell by a bishop The order for the blessing, naming, and chrismation of a bell Typicon for church bell ringing